In addition to crypto anarchy, uh, I have IT security company. Uh, we do some technical IT security, and I'm crypto anarchist, which means that sometimes I'm I'm more anarchist than crypto. Sometimes I'm more crypto than than anarchist. In this presentation, I will be more anarchist anarchistic than crypto. So be prepared. This will be a, a bit anti-government presentation, because I think, uh, as you can see, recent events like, like PRISM and NSA uh, spying, we can, we can see that uh, democratic Western governments uh, started to completely fail. Uh, so the title of my presentation is Digital Privacy from the Economical Pragmatic Perspective. Uh, I, I like I like Austrian economy, uh, Austrian economy school, and which is uh, which is um, some alternative economy school to the the, the current uh, perceiving perceiving of economy by the the, the current, uh, current government and and state. Uh, what will be the goal of my presentation? Uh, my goal of, of this presentation will be to, to contradict the following three digital privacy myths. The first one is that governments can effectively fight uh, cybercrime. Uh, firstly, uh, I'd like to say that cybercrime is a hype, it's a really big hype, and all of you who are in IT security industry know usually very well that cybercrime is a hype. Usually, uh, this hype is supported by the, 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 the gov government opinions that uh, uh, there are some cyber terrorists, and uh, we need we need to, to fund and to invest a lot of money to, to fight, fight fight cyber crime. The second myth uh, I would like to contradict is that every citizen has a right for digital privacy protection. It sounds very good, uh, but I would like to show you that uh, that it's immoral to uh, to make possible or to guarantee uh, right for digital privacy protection to, to every citizen. It's not moral. Um, and the third, last, last point of my presentation is that more strict regulation and and legislation improve or will improve citizens' uh, digital privacy, which is also not true. And as we can see, thanks to a lot of strict uh, regulation like data retention law or uh, some, uh, some blocks of uh, cash limits, for example, uh, we as citizens are tracked and monitored much more than, than we were before before this uh, legislation and these strict regulations. So, <clears throat> uh, all people who, who know, uh, from an economical point of view, how uh, IT security works, know very well that if you want to invest uh, some money to security, it always uh, should make some economical sense, usually. So, if, practically, if if all security investments exceeds or exceed potential loss, uh, usually these implemented security countermeasures are useless. You know, so, for example, it means that if your potential loss is, for example, 1,000 euros, it doesn't make sense to uh, invest, for example, 10,000 euros to, to IT security because your, your loss is uh, significant, significantly less than uh, that potential security investment to. Uh, so, uh, in the free security market, uh, most people, or rational thinking people, they invest to IT security uh, if it makes economical sense, or if there is a, a risk of the reputation loss, for example, because otherwise investing money to IT security is usually a waste of money. The problem is, so I would like to, I, I would like to explain to you that the government that wants to, f to fight cybercrime uh, technically is unable to estimate this security inv investment because of many reasons. One of these reasons is that 
uh, the government or the governments have really no idea what is critical, uh, what are critical threats uh, for private uh, company or for, or for the private company sector. Uh, this simply fact uh, usually uh, that the, any government that doesn't know uh, the, the the risk and the, and the potential threats uh, private company usually has. Um, another important thing is that because the government is a monopoly institution, uh, it practically has no uh, reputation lost. What does because because uh, for example if if some, some private information are leaked from some government institution, uh, the reputation can be decreased, but it doesn't have any impact uh, at all, because you still need to use this government institution because there is no alternative, there is no other government institution you can, you can, you, you can use instead of, 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 for example, tax office or, um, or, or, some, or some ministry. So the problem is that, that the government has monopolized uh, a lot of institution and, and so, so any, in, uh, any reputation loss means just nothing. Uh, the other thing is that even, even if the government is uh, capable to, to, uh, uh, to analyze some threats, usually the government does not know if this risk should be accepted or not. The problem is that if some, something in the government doesn't work, uh, for example, drug war or cybercrime war, uh, the government always uh, announced that this is because uh, uh, we have no, no money, it's, it's strictly underpaid. Uh, and it, also, it, it always means that, uh, that we, uh, that we need more money, uh, and of course, because it's a government institution, these money are, are, are taken from the taxpayers. Uh, on the other side, if something, something doesn't work in, in private sector, uh, the company is forced to make economical decision. So for example, if, uh, for economical point uh, of view, if some offered service of private company uh, is not productive, uh, usually, they try to remove this uh, service or product, or they try to change it to be more productive. I'm going to, to show you a video of uh, one guy, Peter Schiff, and this will explain you in more details. This video has maybe three or four minutes. And failure is punished. It's the exact opposite in the government. I'm sorry I mean, for a slow time. In the private sector, if I go out and start a business, and I succeed. I mean, I try to anticipate the desires of, of, of Americans, and I, and, I, and I come up with a product that I think people will value and that they'll want to buy. Now, if my, if my intuition is correct, if I really did find a way of adding value to people's lives, of improving their lives, then my products are going to sell. And they're going to sell for more than it costs me to produce them. I would have created value. I will have combined resources in a way that increased the well-being of society as measured by people's willingness to voluntarily give me their money for my products that they value more than the money that they have. And I would get rich. And as I started making money, uh, because I was right, I would expand, I would grow, I would hire more people, I would sell more stuff, my riches would expand. And, and so success is rewarded. On the other hand, if I came up with a product that nobody wanted, like some kind of an egg soul, right? If I came up with something I was wrong, I misjudged what people were going to want. I produced something that didn't, uh, that didn't have value then I wouldn't make a profit, my business wouldn't expand, in fact, my business would go bankrupt. So the market punishes you when you're wrong and rewards you when you're right. And because you're being rewarded, you expand. So you, we get more of what works in a free market and we get less of what doesn't work. Now, what happens in government? Let's say the government creates a program, an agency, let's say to fight poverty. And let's say it was a success, and 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 and, uh, and, and um, there was no more poverty. Well, then they would have no need for the agency, so they would eliminate it. 
So the successful agency gets eliminated because it solves the problem, and now it's no longer needed. So you know, it's it, you know, but once you create a government agency, that's not what they want. They want to grow. They want to get bigger. So if you're a government agency and your mission is to fight poverty, how do you get bigger? Well, you make sure that the problem you're fighting gets bigger. So if the government has an agency to create poverty, and the result is more poverty, now the agency gets bigger. It can point to the growing problem and say we need more resources. We need more people. We need to have a bigger department. And so the more they fail, the more they succeed. The more their efforts increase what they're trying to fight, the, big, the more the rewards. Now it's a bigger agency with more resources and more clout. So government has a vested interest to fail in anything it does. And they get rewarded for failure and they get punished for success. So given that dichotomy where in government we reward failure and punish success, and in the free market, we punish failure and reward success. Why would you want to continually divert resources away from the free market to government? Because that's what Keynesianism is all about. It's about taking resources that otherwise would have been in private hands and diverted them to public sector, to government use, and turning the free market incentives upside down. We have a reverse Darwinism when, we come, when it comes to the government. It is survival of the least fit. That's not what you want uh, to grow your economy. Imagine how pathetic life would be on this planet if all species evolved or devolved according uh, to uh, government economics. Okay, so it was a bit funny. But you know. Okay, so uh, I would like to describe you uh, the, the term I invented. It's called leaking paradox, and it can be applied, for example, to the uh, Slovak government. So, for example, in Slovakia, if you have a private company and you and and you maintain and you you store some sensitive information of, uh, for example, your your customers, uh, your like like birthdays or passport numbers or credit card numbers or something very sensitive. And you have a breach, and these these all information uh, uh, is leaked. Usually, it means that you are ob and, and of course this information uh, becomes public. It, it means in, it means that you, as a private company, you are obligated to pay uh, penalties to the government because you you uh, you didn't care enough about this private uh, uh, private information. Uh, what is funny about this situation is that if you are not a private company, but you are the government institution, uh, uh, for example, uh, in Slovakia, we have a uh, few, few years ago, we, we had quite a big breach from Slovak Cadaster, uh, all birthdays of, uh, of all of property owners in Slovakia were leaked. So, uh, if you are the, the government institution and you have a leak, First, you have no risk of uh, losing the reputation because of monopoly. You have no, no other alternatives to, to prefer some, some other government institution. And the, the, the second interesting paradox is that uh, despite the fact that this, uh, this government institution uh, has uh, to pay penalties, for example, to some court or something like that, uh, finally, these monies are paid by, by citizens. By, by all poor people. So, uh, what is interesting about this is that when uh, when the, the government uh, when when the mistake of, of leaking information is done by the government, uh, the citizens are always those who are paid for this mistake, which is not the case of the private company. You know what I what I'm trying to explain to you. So, so for example, if, if my, my sensitive information uh, is stored and is maintained by some, some government institution, and this, in this government institution, they, they completely ignore IT security, and my information is leaked, that's me exactly who, uh, who pays for, for, for this government mistake. So, and the last thing is that cybercrime is hype, a really big hype. And despite this hype, uh, still U.S. and European uh, governments they try to increase their budget for fighting cybercrimes. 
Uh, there is one good publication, uh, uh, publication or paper I'd like to uh, tell is from Ross Anderson, Chris Barton, and many, many other people cause, uh, called Measuring the Cause of Cybercrime. And I definitely recommend you to read this paper. And uh, according to this paper, um, uh, the potential loss of cybercrime is much less than uh, the uh, potential cost or for, for countermeasure uh, for fighting cybercrime. <clears throat> the, uh, the, the other uh, myth I would like to contradict is that every citizen has a right for digital privacy protection. Maybe this explanation uh, would be a bit shocking for you, Stefan, because you are a big European fighter for digital privacy. Or, but what I want to say is that the problem of cost of uh, the government privacy protection is that these costs are always externalized to all taxpayers. And the, the bad thing is that even to those one who do not care about their, their privacy, and also, uh, and, and, and because they do not care, they are not willing to contribute to that. So, uh, so you, you may say, okay, but all people everywhere in the European Union, they deserve to, to have some uh, privacy, <coughs> digital privacy protection. Um, that's probably true, but if you think that all these people, they need a digital pr uh, protection or digital privacy protection, it's probably the most best uh, or the best idea is to create some non-profit, non-commercial organization and invest your own money and your own time to educate these people and not try to force all other people to pay uh, for their digital privacy protection. So what does it mean? So you don't want to provide some information to Facebook, the news. There are alternatives, definitely, at least diaspora and some other uh, social networks. You don't want to provide sensitive information to Twitter. Don't use it. There are some alternatives. The same can be said uh, about providing your sensitive information to Google. So, uh, so don't use these services and try to not force other people to pay for EU privacy regulation to regulate Facebook, Twitter and Google. Because the problem is uh, that our Western society uh, think that, uh, or is thinking in some uh, positive concept of rights, you know, that all people deserve everything. The problem is that if you want to guarantee some rights to some people, you always need to externalize the cost for this to all people, and this is a problem. So the uh, problem is that creating and enforcing this regulation is really expensive and inefficient process. And the problem is that if there are some alternative to Facebook or Twitter, some alternative free uh, crypto network, for example, uh, these regulations are also applied to these alternative networks and alternative services. And of course, costs are externalized to all people, which is not moral and which is not uh, fair. So, uh, but you say, okay, but even irresponsible people need a digital privacy protection, you know. We need to care about these poor people. Um, it's likely true, but if you, if you always care about that, they will be always responsible. Uh, this is quite, quite cruel, but it's true, unfortunately. So, so the question is, ideal solution. I think the, 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 the best ideal uh, would be if everybody can decide voluntarily if he wants to be a product of Facebook Google means product you you are product of this of, of, of Facebook or Google and and thanks to this you can have these services for free or everybody can should decide if he wants to be customers of of some companies that really care about digital privacy and security and pay some money for that or the third option for you or to use trusted open source alternatives, your, your own networks, your, your own alter, social alternatives. So, uh, and the last slide, or last uh, myth I would like to contradict is that 
stricter or more strict regulation and legislation will always improve citizen digital privacy. Unfortunately, it's not true, and all, um, all of us, we know this fact very well. Uh, for example, in Slovakia, and I think this is also true in Hungary, we have uh, data retention law, according to which uh, all information uh, about, about uh, all, head, head personal, all information about uh, calls or emails, I mean, like who is calling to who and when exactly, according to this stupid law, has to be stored at least six months up, uh, up to 12 or 24 four months. And personally, I think that this, uh, uh, this law is really bad. Uh, for example, in Germany, uh, this law uh, was uh, considered to be not according to the constitution. So, uh, but unfortunately, it's still valid in Slovakia. And I also think also in Hungary. The other problem um, uh, regarding our digital privacy is that, for example, in Slovakia, we have cash limits law, which means that uh, if you are a physical person, you cannot you cannot pay more than fifteen thousand euros by cash. Or if you are like a person, like a company, you are not allowed to pay more than 5,000 5, euros. So according to this law in Slovakia, uh, if you make any financial transaction above, uh, for example, 5,000 euros, you always have to use bank. So you provide your, your transaction information to the bank. And, and, you, and, and this is just reality. <laughs> Uh, and also, as Stefan mentioned, uh, we had a lot of uh, government spying programs, priest-related spying programs in, in many countries. Uh, the other uh, big problem is, um, as Snowden revealed, that uh, all payment transaction, I mean, all payment trans transaction, even in, in inside of the European Union, uh, that use uh, that use SWIFT. Are sent to NSA. So, so NSA at this moment has complete information about all uh, financial payments with a SIFT code. So, um, so I don't. It's, it's maybe it sounds very cruel, but I think it's it's true that governments are the biggest privacy threat at the moment, and the the. the why this is really dangerous in this situation is because anti-privacy regulations are legally enforced. I mean, we have valid data retention law, we, we, have, a valid, uh, we have a valid cash limits, uh, and so on. So, and, and, and dangerous are because all these anti-privacy regulations are directly supported by us, by our money. By so that's all. Thank you a lot for your attention, and if you have any question, just raise your hand. Yeah. Well, um, <coughs> you mentioned that it should be free. Of course it should be free, I totally agree with you. Everyone can act like he wants to act as soon as he doesn't impact other people with his actions, right? Yeah. Um, but actually, when you choose to be available via Gmail, yeah. because you have only a Gmail address, yeah. um, that actually forces me, even if I do not want to interact with Google, to interact with Google because you choose so. So this is actually the expansion of the threat model that I've shown in my own presentation. So, so actually, my own private uh, data leaks through your connection. So actually, this this leads to some kind of isolations of privacy um, conscious people and um, people who compromise their privacy, right? Yeah. That's true. Uh, what I'm telling to uh, what I'm trying to to tell you that uh, uh, there are a lot of people that ignore uh, that their that, that ignore their privacy, uh, and they use, uh, for example, Google, and they use uh, a lot of Google services. Um, and I think it's really immoral to uh, to to want from you or from me to uh, try to persuade Google to protect privacy of these people by 
our money by using our money. You know what, I, what I'm trying to say. Okay, so so I I think it's not fair. I, I'm 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 not uh, telling uh, or. I think it's definitely not fair that, that Google, for example, or Facebook or social networks, they completely ignore uh, privacy of the users because the users are just their product, as, as I've already mentioned. Um, that, uh, that's part of their business model. They, they do it because it's part of their business model. But the problem is that uh, if you don't like it, uh, or if you don't use these services, okay, you, you, you mentioned that you are forced to use sometimes through Google or, or, or Facebook or maybe some social networks, but it's definitely immoral to, uh, to, to, to try to, to force all people to pay for uh, uh, these privacy regulation. That's simply immoral. No. Maybe, you know my point. So, so if you if you care about these poor people that ignore uh, privacy, the best thing you can do is just organize, for example, crypto parties and try to explain them there are alternatives to Google, there are something something else. But it's not definitely fair to 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 uh, uh, to, to come to me and 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 want uh, uh, increase taxes from me just because you think that Google is bad. Why increases it the costs? or your taxes, then um, we regulate Google to, to not doing something. Um, the question here is, like, um, privacy of course has a cost. Because yeah. if, you, if you care about your privacy, you run your own infrastructure, right? Yeah. Because you do not trust a third party. So you eliminate the third party. Yeah. And eliminating the third party costs you money currently. But I, I pay the price already for myself. I don't pay taxes for this. But because there are these less conscious people, I'm actually paying not a tax, but a privacy tax. My, my own data leaks through there, right? So actually, we should transfer from a tax-based model to you should care about your own privacy and pay for it yourself, right? Yeah, that's true. Definitely. I think this is probably the, 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 the ideal solution. So, uh, the, you, personally, I have a problem with the coercion uh, used to, you know, because some, some, some people just say they're uh, non, uh, or, you know, poor Google users, because there are some poor Google users that completely ignore the privacy, it doesn't mean that you should contribute to. Uh, to enforcing some some EU privacy regulation, and and because this this EU privacy regulation is expensive process, it, this regulation has to be written, this regulation has to be enforced, and all of this uh, is a, a lot of money, and I think and I think it's not very fair, for example, to you, you care about your privacy, your digital privacy, to pay for the stupidity or for you know, uh, for for these Google poor Google users. That's it. That's what I want to say. So, definitely, we should switch to some more voluntary uh, model. I think I might have an example of a stricter regulation that could actually not increase the cost of privacy protection, but could decrease it. Uh, that would be to have uh, actually influence your sanctions on companies that uh, uh, don't treat correctly your privacy, uh, your personal data, like if they collect them without your uh, your consentment and so on, they are they can be they can be fine. Uh, actually, today this the amount of the fine is not really as high as to worry Google because it's only three three hundred thousand euros yeah. top. But there has been propositions to index this fine on. Uh, um, on the turnover of the company, which is to say, if the company is doing a massive turnover of yeah, yeah. money on top of uh, uh, illegal okay. thing, they can have a huge fine. And that's an example of something that will increase, that decrease the, the cost of privacy because the government will gain money 
Yeah, I know. I know. So, so uh, these penalties should depend on turnover of the of the given for uh, company. So, for example, Google uh, should be obligated to pay much more money uh, if uh, if it does uh, if it doesn't care about privacy of the user users than, for example, some other company like small company. The problem is, what about free uh, free open source projects uh, owned by some non-profit, non-commercial organization? If these non-profit, non-commercial organizations they don't care about privacy, how do you want to solve it? How do you want to force them? There like uh, there are other decisions. If you are even if there, this is a free open source project, there if you are doing something on the internet, there is always someone. Uh, hosting, uh, editing the website, something, dealing with some person behind them. Mm, yeah, never, mm, nobody behind. We have, uh, there are a lot of people. If, if you have two, two kinds of services, the one is Google, uh, Google uh, service that really care about, about privacy of the, of the user, but this, this service will cost 20 euros monthly. And you have another service when most, most users are product of this service, and, this ser uh, in, and in this case, Google does not care about privacy of their users at all, and this service is for free. And then when you have, and when you give, uh, the, when you have, when you give these two options to the, the, the ordinary user and ask him, you can cho you, you can choose: Do you want any privacy? If yes, pay 20 euros. Or you do you, do you want, or you want no privacy at all? You have this for free. And I think most people. Most people will choose the second option, you know, and and they they can do it, and they, you can you 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 cannot uh, force the the, the, the organization uh, behind the providing of this service for free to to care about their privacy because they won't really uh, choose to to uh, not to have privacy at all because they want uh, this service for free. You know what I'm talking. Okay, again. Okay, so you have you have two companies. One company really cares about uh, about digital privacy of the users, but because they can uh, because this company they can, they cannot uh, process and then because they cannot use personal information because this personal information has some value and they can be sold. For example, your private, your personal information is sold by Google using AdWords, for example. Uh, so we have two services. The first first one will care about. Uh, Will care about your digital privacy, but you, uh, but because this is not a you know they can, they can, they cannot they, because they cannot sell your information and they need to care about this information. This service will be for some fee, for example, 20 euros monthly. And there will be second service, and the second service uh, will be the same, but will be for free. And 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 in this second option, the Google just or some other company just tell. Uh, to, to the to tells to the to, to, to their customers this service is for free. You have no privacy at all, but it is for free. I still think that most people uh, would choose the second uh, uh, second service. And if if these people, if 80 percent of 90 people, 90 percent people voluntarily choose this service with no privacy at all, you you have no right to force the company behind the second option to to enforce any. Any privacy protection? I don't see why. That, that's not because we signed a contract that it's valid. Or because or no, no, because yeah. people won't really, they choose not to have protection just because they want some product for free. Yes, this this is a conscious choice. Uh, uh, it's, it's voluntary. It doesn't make. It, is that, it doesn't make sense. I think conscious and consent, like conscious consent, yeah. is extremely important. If you don't have that, I think this this doesn't hold. Okay, you can you can you can tell to these people that this decision is probably yeah. scammed. These people are scammed, right? That's probably true. You can you you can you can tell them that it's probably scammed. That their decision is not conscious, but you are not allowed to decide behind themselves. Yeah. You know, no, they, no, no, it's always above contracts and above uh, um, term of services. And so I can send you a contract that tells, yes, I want, I'm conscious and I'm concerned yeah. for you to kill me. Yeah. You do this and you'll be sued. You, you'll be, you, you see the point? Yeah. For, 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 for,
for example, for example, example yeah, yeah, first, yeah, it, dep it, dep it depends how how you, how do you respect voluntary decision. For example, uh, I, I think that autonomy yeah, yeah, is uh, should be legal, and if if, if you want to if you, if you want to kill someone just because not just for fun, but but because for example, he has some uh, some deep pain or something like that, uh, you should have right for that. Yeah. So, for example, okay, if I, if if we if we sign together agreements that you allow me to kill you, and I will do it, definitely this this contract uh, should be how to say, uh, beacon circ circumstance. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you explicitly ask to me, okay. I, I, I'm not saying that it's, it's okay or no, but it's definitely it's, this is your fish, and I should respect it. But your, um, in this case, let's call him the adversary, plays with dirty cards, like overly long eulas that no one ever reads because psychologically they are designed to not be read. So this is really a scam. Yeah. yeah. This is really a scam, and uh, for example, if the problem of eula, eula is that uh, usually, uh, people don't lose anything they think they really lose. So, for example, when, when people start to lose uh, something really important just because they signed a stupid, uh, really bad contract, they just start to read these contracts. And this is a problem of EULA because, the, because they think that it, this, has no, or this has no consequences at all. They click or, and they sign anything. But if there are some consequences, and, and, and these consequences will be critical for these people, I'm pretty sure that they would definitely start to read this stupid Europe. How many people do you know that have bought a online Mac product? Online Ma Mac product? Yeah. Apple, Apple product. I have no idea. You know some? Is it one, five, ten, hundred? Mac product? Yeah, Apple, Apple, Apple product. product. There are some people, yeah, definitely in the hackers community, and I know some, some of them. They are, are really smart people, but they still use Apple products. Uh, even though Apple products uh, are limited in many ways, uh, and are under Apple's control in order to provide the user experience that, that, yeah. they, that they have. Yeah. Not so easy to um, to get them to change. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's true. And I think the same problem is when you use Windows, for example, and or Microsoft products, of course. Uh, if you don't like this situation, you can try to persuade them not to use Mac and to explain them a potential risk. But if they still, yeah, if and if they if they if they know know all know this fact already. Uh, this is just a voluntary decision, and you should respect it, despite the fact that uh, that their information can be uh, spied and monitored and tracked by by Apple. Well, not just their information. What? Not only their information, but also information of anyone who they interact with. Using yeah. If you don't like this situation, and if you, if you really don't like the situation, you should not provide any sensitive information to Mac users. This so, yeah. so what I what I want to say is that um, that it's really unfair. It's, it's really it's not fair uh, for all of, all, all of us to pay or to 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 pay for some regulation to force Apple, uh, you know, to to follow the, some digital privacy protection or something like that. What, what I think I think I don't like I don't like Apple I don't use uh, I don't use Apple I don't like Microsoft products. But what I want to say is that everybody should have uh, uh, option or should have possibility to use uh, what they really want with all risk. It, you know, so. I think the only uh, option to uh, have. Uh, Everyone has his own uh, data uh, known by himself and uh, to stop down all these uh, data uh, handling and is every data that is stored by any organization 
state or private, must uh, be um, must re the owner of the data, well, me, yeah. my data, must get a letter, a letter, not an email, a letter. That this uh, data is stored and what is stored, because that would be much too uh, expensive for all the organizations to store the data. That would be the only way to have uh, to uh, diminish the uh, storing of, of these data. And the other, on the other hand, uh, the data that are stored well, many of them are false. And that would be the only way to have no false data. Yeah, this is probably a good idea. I, I really know your point, but the problem is, and what I, what I was trying to explain to you, is that if you have some, if you want to have some strong uh, privacy protection in our society, someone has to pay for, uh, has to pay for that. And what I want to, uh, uh, someone, because it's an expensive process, digital privacy protection is an expensive pro process. And, the, the, and, what I want, and what I'm trying to say to you, that if some people ignore their privacy and are willing to provide this in, because they're stupid, for example, they're, they're willing to provide the, the information uh, to anybody, you are not, morally, you are not allowed to force these people to contribute this digital privacy if they don't want to care about it. You know what I, what I want to say. So, uh, so yeah, I, I like this, I, I, like, I, I like your idea, but some, some people just prefer product or service for free than their privacy. And if there are some people that prefer uh, their uh, product or something than their personal privacy, I think this their option, uh, their decision, and we should respect it. That's, you know, for example, most people they, they want Google for for free, and if you if the Google uh, you are product of Google, and if you have two options to be product of Google or to uh, or to not to be product of Google, but you need to pay 20 euros monthly because you use Google services. Definitely, most people, 90 percent of people, will choose the, the 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 first option, and and it's completely fine, I think. So I would like to go back to the conscious or unconscious thing and uh, I think most people uh, choose to uh, join the Google account and things unconsciously because okay they know they click and they register but they don't know what's in the background and uh, they don't know uh, what uh, affected them to make that choice and uh, they mainly join uh, Google for example uh, for uh, some teachers um, upload only for Google and the teacher says oh I won't upload to other sites because I use Google and you should use Google too. I heard about this thing uh, in many schools or they join uh, Facebook because many other friends join Facebook because it's, it's cool and they share and they can do actually nothing um, nothing useful but they can spend their time uh, easily they, they choose an easier option but uh, they are not really uh, ever about the background or the psychological side of these things and it starts uh, from the childhood children uh, don't have enough information how things work and uh, many parents don't uh, teach them to be conscious not only about uh, privacy but about uh, the whole life so I think it's a bigger problem it's, it's not just only the privacy but uh, to teach uh, people how they should uh, think about things in a better uh, way so not only just oh, okay I click on this and, and because I don't know what's in the background and how it works it will be fine and, uh, and they say Ah, okay, I didn't know. No, that's that's not right. Uh, I think we should uh, teach these people more. Yeah, definitely. 
I think I think education is the one, the, the definitely the most important uh, thing in, in this case. Even if, for example, if if you make a bad decision and, and you invest a lot of money, uh, for example, to some uh, financial institution and you lose this this money uh, because you don't know background of this financial institution, this is your problem. Firstly, you know. This, this, uh, it's, it's, it's your personal duty to, to find as much as your information if you want to use some service. And, and uh, of course, you can, uh, and you can, you can, for example, uh, uh, you, can, you can decide to, uh, or you, you, you can be, become to, to, to member of some uh, education uh, organization, for example, hackerspace. Or you can you can pay your consultant or something, you know. So so if you if you want to make some critical decision, for example, if to invest your money uh, or to put your money to some finance financial institution, or if you want to if you want to, to uh, make some decision, if you want uh, or if you are willing to provide your information to Facebook or some some other companies, you should ask firstly to ask some other people. You should consult it. And and um, but it's definitely not moral to external externalize all costs to all people who uh, who are, for example, uh, responsible, and you are not. You know, so because these responsible people are forced to pay for for the fact that you are not responsible. You know, it's not simply for. Okay, but uh, you say it's personal choice, uh, but. Uh where does your personality come from? From uh, previous experiences, from other people, and uh, let me say an example. Uh, you inflicted a, a server, just just like uh, someone spam, um, uh, sorry, someone uh, scams a person. Yeah. You have your exploit, your backdoor, whatever. You can modify the logs, you can modify anything on the server. And you can uh, make the server work, uh, look like there is nothing wrong, but actually there is. And uh, when the server checks the logs or their audit things, it will look like everything is fine. Same with people. Uh, they think everything is fine, I made a good decision, but, uh, but they didn't. Do you think that the government should uh, should pay all laws uh, to you just because you have uh, your system exploited? Of course not. If your system is exploited, you are the, 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 that one who, um, who should be responsible for all laws uh, you have just because of compromising your system. Not the government. Not, uh, not other people should contribute to you. So this, I'm, I'm sorry that your system was exploited. I'm, re I'm really sorry. But, uh, but this is your personal problem, and you should, uh, uh, you, you, you should cover all your costs. You know what, I, what I'm... You, it's not very fair to, to, to ask the government to, uh, to pay you something because your system was compromised. Okay, so that's about the responsibility, but uh, people are not taught enough about these responsibilities and you can't say for a young uh, boy or girl that, oh, the, there was a privacy problem, they stole uh, your data and later used up, 10 years later, whatever, because you registered this and that was your responsibility or your parents responsibility the parents maybe the the older ones won't know how these things work they know less about the internet about the it things or anything i think i think all people who want uh, to use any uh, uh, any services that uh, uh, that has uh, or that have something uh, in common with the, the, the privacy protection, they should definitely read something about it. And, and so it's it's like like sexual uh, sexual uh, education. If you know, if you you are a girl and you you become pregnant, uh, you know, what the what the, the government should do about this this your problem? And you, you should you should. Uh, uh, mm, you should be your oral consequences, and these are the same. You know what I what I want to say. There is uh, so uh, if you want to prevent uh, compromising of your private uh, uh, private information, your your privacy, just try to do to do something with that. You know. So that's. I think uh, there is a parallel. Uh, 
to these uh, privacy and paying. Many years ago, in the villages, there was a small stop who could get nearly everything you needed, really. But then there came the big magazines in the next town. They got cheaper. And all the people with their cars, they went there. And the small shop couldn't live. That, that's the same. Uh, that's uh, 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 personally, yeah, yeah. That's probably true, but the problem is that when you want to save uh, local shops, local re re regional shops, you need some money. And tell me how. Uh, how effectively and in a moral way, without using coercion and without using ag aggression, you want to gain this money to preserve or to save this local shop. So the question is, okay, I like local shop. I, do, I don't like Tesco. I like local, local shop. But the question is, who and why will pay for uh, preserving these local shops? Is a question. You know, so it's, a, it's, it's still about money. So, so if, if, people are, if people voluntarily they want to support local shop, voluntary, all of them, they will, they will buy uh, in local shops. But if, they, if all people, they voluntarily prefer cheaper prices in some huge supermarkets, that's simply their decision and you should respect it. It's evolution, economical evolution, I think. That's it. Then they get old and can't drive the car, then they will see their false decision. They made. Uh, I think there is, is a, a really. In, uh I, I, can, I can tell you practically how you can support local shops or local businesses. For example, in Slovakia, uh, the 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 one one of the most important reasons why local shops uh, do not exist or or there are only few is there are a really huge uh, government uh, burden or a lot of stupid uh, requirements that, ha that have to be fulfilled uh, by, uh, by these uh, local shops. And the problem is that only big supermarkets uh, um, legally can, can fulfill these requirements. And that's thanks to government. These local shops uh, do not exist. You know what I, what I want to say. So, so if you have a very bureaucratic uh, requirements and regulation, it always means that sm small companies uh, uh, Will end up, and and it supports the big companies or big supermarkets. Well, uh, in the internet, well, Google and all these uh, parties, uh, they live from the uh, people who want to save their money. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And uh, those who want. Uh, the payment for the service yeah. and not get the payment uh, by selling uh, the, the personal uh, data. Uh, that, that's a, a problem. Personally, I really don't like it, uh, but you should definitely respect that uh, most people prefer their, uh, their money uh, um, instead of their privacy. That's a simple fact. That they are going through decision, and you know, it's just fact. So. That's the same point as the, the small shops. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. So, do you have uh, some other questions, or I will be here maybe another 30 minutes. So, if you have any questions, just come to me. Thank you a lot.